بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد أبرزنا سيدنا الحمد لله we are at the point where we are looking at the another third important thing that رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم did which was to create the contract the covenant it is called the first constitution of the world, we'll call, call it whatever you want. Uh, this was the agreement, the contract and the covenant between uh, the Muhajirun and the Ansar, the people who came from Mecca and elsewhere, who migrated to Medina in order to be uh, with Rasulullah and uh, the Ansar who were their hosts, uh, as well as a covenant between the five major groups uh, of people in Medina. There were three Jewish tribes, Banu Khuraida, Banu Khainuka, and Banu Nadir. And there were two Arab tribes, the Aus and the Khazraj. So this, this was a, the, the entire uh, gamut of people who were in Medina. As you can see, uh, this was a very diverse group. It was not just one set of people, a very diverse group. And uh, uh, this was the covenant between them. Ibn Ishaq, uh, the historian and, and uh, uh, Muhaddith, he writes this in his uh, in his book. He says uh, he he, he uh, uh, writes the co the contract that Rasulullah made. Um, he said that um, the contract was that. Um, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent and the Merciful. This is a document from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabiul Ummi, the unlettered prophet between the believers and Muslims of Quraysh and Yathrib. So Muslims of Quraysh were the Muhajirun who came from Mecca and Yathrib was the name of Medina. And their followers, allies and supporters establishing that they are one nation apart from all others. So the first part of the covenant is goes to the same thing which we talked about earlier, which was the formation of the Muslim Brotherhood, which was based not on anything uh, else, but the uh, ties of uh, ties of, uh, of of faith in, uh, and not the ties of any. Uh, other kind, which is the usual ties of family and uh, and uh, tribe and so on and so forth. So um, let's go back to this thing. In the name of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Beneficent and Merciful. This is a document from Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the unlettered prophet, Nabiul Ummi, between the believers and Muslims of Quraysh and Yathri. So the first group of people, the Muslims of Muhajirun and the Ansar, both are Muslim, that is the base. Uh, that is the, 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 the thing that keeps them together. Um, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent and Merciful, this is a document from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabi Ummi, the unlettered prophet between the believers and Muslims of Quraysh and Yathrib and their followers, allies and supporters, establishing that they are one nation apart from all others. The immigrants from Quraysh will maintain their current practice and will honor blood money contracts between themselves and will treat their weaker members with kindness and justice. The Banu Aus shall maintain their current practice and honor their former blood money contracts, each party treating their weaker members with kindness and justice among all believers. And he mentioned all the clans of the Ansar and all the families from them. The believers shall not leave anyone among them burdened by debts without giving to him in kindness and paying for him any ransom money or blood money that he owes. A believer shall not ally with any freed man of a second believer against that man. Pious believers act against any of their own who practice evil or seek to bring harm, sin, aggression or corruption 
among believers. Believers will unite against anyone doing this even if he may be one of their own sons. No believer shall kill any believer for any non-believer nor shall he help any non-believer against a believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection is all one. The least of them can offer protection to others. Believers are allies to one another excluding others. Whoever from among the Jews follows us shall receive help and equality. They shall not be maltreated nor shall help be afforded to others against them. No peace shall be accepted from any one believer to the exclusion of others when the battle is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's cause. Among them, equality and justice must prevail. In any expedition we engage in, riders will take turns on their mounts. Believers shall avenge one another for blood shed in Allah's cause. Believers who are pious are well guided on the straightest of paths. No polytheist shall be allowed to offer protection for the, por- for the property of people of Quraysh, nor try to interfere with any believer. Anyone who has clearly aggressed and caused the death of any believer shall be subject to retaliation unless the dead person's executor can be satisfied. Believers as a whole shall take action against him and no excuse for their not doing so shall be acceptable. It shall not be permissible for any believer who accepts what is in this document and who believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment to give help or shelter to any wrongdoer. Any believer who does so will be the object of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's curse and anger on the Day of Judgment and neither compensation nor excuse will be accepted from him. <clears throat> Any matter in which you disagree must be referred to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The Jews shall pay expenses along with the Muslims so long as they are allied in warfare. The Jews of Bani Aus are one nation with the believers. The Jews shall have their religion and the Muslims their own. <clears throat> This applies uh, to their freedmen and to themselves, except to those who commit sins and are unjust. Such people only harm themselves and their families. What applies to Bani Aus shall also apply to the Jews of Banu Najjar, Banu Harith, Banu Sa'ada, uh, Banu Jushan, Banu Aus, Banu Salaba, uh, Banu Jufna and Banu Shutaiba. These are all the different uh, clans in Madinah. The close associates of the Jews shall be viewed as themselves. None of them shall go to war without Muhammad Wasallam's permission. However, he is not thereby constrained from taking revenge for injury. Whoever attacks another shall do so to protect himself and his family and not act uh, unjustly for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemns such acts meaning acts of injustice the Jews shall bear their own expenses the Muslims theirs each must help one another against those who fight those who adopt this document they must give one another advice and consultation and do good and avoid evil a man is not held blameworthy on behalf of his ally help must be given to those who are wronged the center, uh, the center of Yathrib shall be a sanctuary for those who agree to this document. One's neighbor shall be treated as oneself without being harmed or sinned against. And notice here, it says neighbor does not say Muslim neighbor. No property shall be entered upon without the permission of its owner. In the case of any dispute or incident occurring between those agreeing to this document, and involving consequences likely to be harmful, the matter must be referred to Allah and to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah, uh, who is the messenger of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledges what is very good and very pious in this document. Quraysh and those who help them shall receive no protection. Those accepting this document must help one another against anyone attacking Yathrib. 
If they are called upon to make peace and do so and keep to it, they will be making peace. If they make a similar demand, it is up to the Muslims to agree, except if warfare is over faith. Each participant shall receive whatever portion is due to him from his own side's winnings. This document uh, will not provide protection for anyone sinful or unjust. Whoever goes to war will be safe and whoever stays in the town will be safe except those who have sinned or been unjust. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides protection for those who are good and pious. Now, as you can see, this is a uh, very detailed, uh, very detailed uh, document and very detailed, uh, you know, uh, covenant, uh, which takes into account all the different people, the tribes and so on uh, in Medina and ensures that the rights of everyone are protected and that uh, one does not act against the interest of the other. Now, many times people have raised this question and we'll come to that inshallah uh, of why the Jews, the Jewish tribes were expelled from Medina. Um, and the, the answer to that question is in looking at this covenant because here is a covenant which clearly states uh, the responsibility of each uh, tribe and each person individual as well as collective uh, towards others uh, and it says very clearly that each will protect the other each will be just and and uh, uh, you know kind to, to to the other and that they will not um, they will not uh, align themselves with anybody else and that they will not, uh, you know, uh, join with anybody else uh, in this whole thing uh, against the others, against the people of uh, Medina and against the other tribes. Therefore, uh, they uh, will not be, uh, and if they do so, if they join up against others, outsiders, against the people of Medina, then they are in violation of this contract. So when, when, when this is what exactly happened with the Jewish tribes, where they aligned with the Quraysh. After signing the document, they reneged and they went against it, against their own side, what they had, what they had agreed and what they had signed, signed on. They went against that and the result was that they, they were expelled. We will come to that in detail, inshallah. Now, let's look at uh, some of the lessons from this uh, from this whole document, uh, which are quite uh, uh, quite amazing, and it shows the farsightedness and uh, the wisdom of uh, Rasulullah sallam in starting off his uh, stay and his uh, rule because he was the ruler in Medina uh, with this kind of document. Now, se several lessons. So the first one. The lawmaker is the leader. So anywhere, wherever it is, if it's the lawmaker that is the leader, the leader is the lawmaker. So Rasulullah wrote a document to regulate relationships. And so his own authority was established and he became the judge. And as you can see in this document, uh, it says if there is a dispute, it will be referred to Allah and his messenger. So therefore, all uh, disagreements were uh, uh, and all disputes were to be referred to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became the, uh, the judge and he became the ruler of Medina. And this document uh, acknowledged that, this document stated that, and whoever signed this document were, uh, bore witness to that and accepted uh, his, <coughs> his authority and his rulership. The relationship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also is clearly defined in this and so is the fact that the authority of Rasulullah comes uh, came directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so it is the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is being established in Medina. So this is a very important part. Uh, it was not a, a monarchy was not being established. Rasulullah was not saying that this is now uh, a monarchy and I and my family have special status and uh, after me, my family, my children, whoever are going to be the rulers of this place, 
There's no mention of any of that. He is the judge. He is the leader. He is the one we refer to because he is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a place in which the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being established. And therefore, uh, in this place, uh, Allah is supreme and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rule is supreme. And therefore, we are for, uh, whatever is happening here is happening as a consequence of that. And any disputes will be referred to uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his position as the um, as as the representative of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as the Rasul as the Messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So even the Jews who did not believe in him uh, as the Messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, uh, they did not accept him as a messenger. Therefore, they were not Muslim. But they signed the document between themselves and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So in one way, they also accepted that he was the messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, even though religiously they did not accept that. The second uh, very important uh, thing here is the Muslim Ummah is one community excluding others. So the distinct identity of the Muslim is an important part uh, of this. Now, um, the thing to understand here, and there's no need to get apologetic about it or to feel, you know, somehow that this is a in, uh, uh, this is uh, not justice. Very easy way to understand this is to look at yourself and say, you are living in a community. Uh, so in your home, it is you and your family. And then you have an extended family around that. So there are your uncles and your cousins and your second cousins and your third cousins and whatnot. So there's extended family. Uh, and then there are your neighbors. And then there are the other people in that community, right? So up other, other than neighbors, you know, when you go, when you go to... A, to to your to your see the town and you have the school the school teachers and you have the uh, the 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 school that you, your children go to the teachers there and so on the school authorities uh, you might have the uh, people in the market and so on so there's a the, the bigger bigger circle now in all of this obviously your family your personal immediate family you your parents your uh, siblings and your your spouse your children uh, these are uh, these take precedence over everything. Uh, the, you owe your loyalty to them and they to you, and so on. And this is not considered unjust or or bad by anybody. This is this is this is perfectly normal and natural that this group of mine, who to whom I am related by blood, uh, will take precedence over everybody else. What Islam did was, it said that the relationship. The, the reason for relationship was not blood, but faith. And therefore the Muslim Ummah, uh, as, as people of faith, will be together. They will be one and distinct from everybody else. Now this does not mean they are enemies of everybody else. No, they are friends of everybody else. They are friends of everyone. They love everyone. They will help each, uh, others and so on. But in terms of anything, this group is one and they will remain one. And uh, if somebody attacks this group, then this group will defend one another against the others, right? But will, but but if there is somebody who is treating another person who is not from this group, if there is a if there is a Jew or a Hindu or a Christian or a Sikh or anyone uh, who is being treated unjustly, who is being oppressed, and there is a Muslim there, will that Muslim support the aggressor? Or will that Muslim support the one who is being aggressed against? Very clearly, the Muslim will and should support the one who is being oppressed, who is being aggressed aggressed against, even if the aggressor is a Muslim. So when we say the Muslims are together as one group and they will help and support one another, that is only in goodness, not in oppression. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this very clearly in the Quran. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah said, Ta'awanu ala al-birri wa taqwa 
Wala ta'awanu ala al-ismi wal udwan. Allah said, help one another in goodness and in piety and do not help one another in rebelliousness and in sin. So very clearly, this support refers to support in all good things, not in uh, in evil. So, so we do not support a Muslim uh, just because uh, just because he is um, uh, just because he is Muslim, right? We do not meet a, uh, we do not uh, uh, support a Muslim just because he is a Muslim. We support a Muslim only if he is right and if the muslim is wrong if the muslim is oppressing uh, another person who is not a muslim uh, then we do not support the muslim we support the other person who may not be a muslim but uh, because that person is being oppressed against and we will support that person and we will stand up against the muslim even though he's a muslim right this is very very clear in islam so we come back to the second point. The Muslim Umbah is one community excluding others. So the distinct identity of the Muslim is important part of this. And so, for example, we have uh, Muslims pray with their shoes on. And this, of course, uh, of course, this uh, that refers to uh, uh, praying uh, with shoes. The shoes must be clean and we are not talking about taking them into the masjid. Um, uh, dyeing, uh, you know, the hair and the beard with henna, uh, fasting on the... Um, and our, our religious practices and so on. Third one, uh, the Jews had equality and permission to practice their religion freely. Now, again, people talk about, uh, you know, conversion by the sword. The sim simplest question to ask is why were the Jews in Medina not converted by the sword? I mean, why, why do we need to go all the way to India or somewhere and say so-and-so did this? If so-and-so did that, first of all, there is no forcible conversion. You cannot force somebody to convert and change their opinion and change their belief in their heart by force. It is simply not doable. If you want to do that, try and convince somebody to uh, to support a different football club from the one that they support or try to, to get a uh, Whig to support the Tories or the Tory to support the Whigs uh, or the Democrats to support Republicans uh, and vice versa or a, a you know BJP supporter to uh, vote for Congress and vice versa. The, 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 I mean, we cannot even do this with uh, with things which are you know far far less serious than religious beliefs. I mean, religious beliefs are the, the 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 most difficult to change. There's no way of changing. The only way a person will change their religious belief is if they are genuinely convinced that the the belief the other belief is better than their own and then they will convert if they want to convert. If somebody forces, there's no way you can force. You can force somebody to bend their head and to, to act out certain things. But in the heart, the same, whatever they believe in remains in the heart. There's no way anybody can change that. And if anyone wants to believe this uh, complete rubbish, it's up to them. So here, point number three, Jews had equality. They had permission to practice their religion freely and had the protection of the Muslims. They had to support the Muslims and give them advice and counsel. Obviously, the, 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 the point of being equal was that you were equal and therefore you treated one another as friends. Nobody uh, could leave Medina without the permission of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, just as you can't leave your con your country today without a passport, so it's a it's a you know similar kind of uh, order was created. Uh, number four, Medina was made uh, the the uh, made the haram uh, Medina al haram, uh, which means that this was a place which was uh, which was a sanctuary, center of Medina. Therefore, there is no hunting uh, or cutting of trees or fighting in the center of Medina and today this refers to uh, Masjid al-Nabawi sharif and the area surrounding Masjid al-Nabawi. Uh, so this was the, the purpose of the covenant uh, was to establish, um, you know, was, was to establish um, the, the, uh, the, the, establish the, the, uh, Establish Islam in uh, in Medina, and to begin the establishment of that, now obviously you had to have uh, 
you had to have uh, peace and, and harmony and Rasulullah therefore uh, started uh, that with uh, creating a, an agreement uh, whereby uh, this would happen because this is a, another one of the very important things that I want to um, uh, want to uh, uh, you know mention to you and, uh, and and emphasize is that all peace and harmony and so on is the result of justice and this is something that today we forget we like to uh, talk about these things but we uh, we forget these things uh, peace is peace is an effect think about this there are there are things which are causes and there are things which are effects right this is the world of cause and effect if you want to change an effect, you must address the cause, right? Say, for example, a headache is an effect. Uh, if you have uh, persistent headaches, it just goes on. Uh, you always have it. Then what do you do? You go to the doctor. The doctor says, well, let's go to the cause. What, what is causing this effect? He won't simply say, well, now eat Tylenol for the rest of your life, right? Take a handful of Tylenol. Uh, it's a pretty useless thing in any case. But, you know, you might say, well, take a handful of it. Don't take one or two. Uh, they, they, they will not tell you this. This is nonsense. So they will say, let's go to the root cause of that. What is the reason? Why are you getting these headaches? Is it because of allergies? Are you, uh, are you allergic to certain things? Is it because of lack of sleep? Uh, right? Um, may Allah protect you and me. Uh, is it because of a brain tumor? Uh, this could also cause uh, headaches. Now, each, each cause uh, differs in its seriousness. If it's just an allergy, it's very simple. I stop eating chocolate or whatever it is, whatever it is that is causing the headache, it goes away. If it is lack of sleep, well, it's a little more serious, but I will make sure that I change my schedule in such a way that uh, I get enough sleep. But if it's a brain tumor, then what do I do, right? I, I need to get it treated and uh, we don't know is it treatable, not treatable, does it require surgery or radiation or whatnot. So the thing, point I'm making here is that if you want to change an effect, you have to look at the cause. Now, people want peace. Everybody talks about peace. Oh, we should have peace and this is very important and blah, blah. Peace is not a cause. Peace is the effect. What causes peace? What is the reason for peace? It is justice. Now, this is the beauty of Islam. This is the beauty of the wisdom of Rasulullah that he addresses the causes. Right? He says now, if you want to have peace in Medina, if you want to have this diverse bunch of people, you've got the Banu Khainuka, the Banu Quraida, the Banu Nadir, the three Jewish tribes, you've got the Aus and the Khazraj, the, five, the, the uh, Arab tribes, then you've got a sixth one uh, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the mix and that is the Muhajirun. These are the Quraysh and the others, uh, people from other tribes of Makkah and Hijaz who came to Medina. So you've got six different diverse people in a society that uh, was based on tribal uh, alliances and tribal allegiance, a society which was characterized by strife, by fighting, by vendetta, by revenge. So this was a, not a simple, uh, you know, bunch of uh, nice, peaceful people. In any case, they, no, these were highly... Um, antagonistic, uh, highly uh, people who are very uh, quarrelsome, uh, right? People who are very quick to take offense and uh, carried grudges for literally for generations. Uh, very, very, very prone to pulling out their swords and chopping uh, each other's heads off and so on. Such people, Rasulullah is has the task of making them into people who are focused on justice and being uh, being peaceful. So what does he do? He focuses on justice and he says justice is important. Establish justice. Once you establish justice, peace is the automatic result. And that is why this covenant and the covenant made it very clear that the, everyone will have the freedom to practice their own religion. Everyone will have the freedom to live according to their own culture and so on and so forth. And everyone must come together to help everyone else. The, the, the Jews and the Christ, uh, and the there were no Christians there, so the Jews and the Muslims uh, and the Muslims from Medina and the Muslims from outside were all going to be brothers and sisters to one another. The Muslims would form a, a individual group in that uh, with their own, with, with, with uh, loyalty to each other as distinct from the others, 
but all of them together were loyal to one another, were to be loyal to one another and distinct from anyone outside of Medina. So the people of Medina would, would live together peacefully with the people of Medina and would defend each other against aggress aggressors from outside. Now we'll go in, in, in the future classes, we'll see, did this actually happen? Did it not happen? Did somebody break the covenant? What happened? Inshallah, we'll talk about that later. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.